Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to my review of this item. This is sold as the super fast full tang Kukuri. Right, it is 12 inches in blade length. It is high carbon steel, 5160 high carbon steel, an excellent steel for this application. In the text description box, I will include a link if you want to pick one of these up. I will also include the website that I got this from, Great Gurkha Kukuri, a very good website. They actually have a YouTube channel as well. They have Instagram, they have Facebook, and they have Twitter. So I will list all their social media in the text description box and you can you can see the stats on this. They have over a hundred different models of Kukri that you can choose from. This one right here that I'm going to review for you, this is their best selling model. Now the maker of this Kukri is Master Bladesmith Perna Darnal. He's very well known in Nepal and around the world, 25 years of experience forging kukris, right? He has also made kukris for Jason Knight, who is on that program Forged in Fire. He has also worked uh, with A.G. Russell, legendary icon in the knife world. You all know the A.G. Russell catalog. He has produced kukris for A.G. Russell, all right? And he does have a Facebook page. If you want to see more of his work, I'll include that Facebook page as well. Now this comes with a sheath. You see it right there, genuine leather. I believe that's goat leather they said on their website. It's got a large belt loop there. Now the maker of this Kukri also does custom work. If you have a, a custom job for him, you can contact him uh, through their website, right? But I'm afraid to ask the prices, but I, I mean, I'm sure it's worth it. This comes with two other tools. That is a small knife. It is very thick, but extremely sharp. And that's uh, the other implement, uh, it is that's not a knife, unsharpened, but you can use that as a honing steel. You can use it as a striker. You can you could even use it as a pry bar if you can get it under what you need to pry. All right, so it comes with those two small tools, right, as is tradition. All right, so that's a pretty nice sheath there. Okay, the usage. What are we going to do first? I, f I was in the mood for a little bit of uh, bushcraft practice. So we're going to make a notch stick, which is simply an exercise to practice your notching. I don't know if you're into bushcraft, but that's pretty big. So I figured I'd, you know, throw a bone to, to all my loyal bushcrafters in that community uh, who have been very nice to me. Now, a kukri is really a very useful tool. Uh, traditionally, a kukri is a knife. But if you look at some of the some of the kukris, I mean, I've seen kukris that are like like three feet long. The blade is three feet long, but they're still going to be called a knife traditionally. But if you look at how they function, they can basically function the way a heavy machete would function, which means it can do all the things that a heavy machete from, let's say, uh, Thailand or Philippines could do, meaning a jungle survival tool. All right, so there are my notches, but they're still a little sloppy, so I'm going to clean them up with the uh, very sharp edge on this thing. All right, the inner curve of a kukri, 1,001 uses for that inner curve, but there, not bad. I chose, like, the easiest type of notch to make because, it, you know, hey, we got a lot of other stuff we, we got to do. All right, now I'm going to do, this is just some carving, and really I just wanted to show, like, one example of what you can use that inner curve of the kukri for you can draw it down a piece of wood and and therefore shape that piece of wood now you're going to have a little more leverage if you hold the piece of wood closer to your body but in this case i had to try to get it in the center of the camera shot so you can see it better but yeah you can carve with a kukri uh, you can whittle with it you can do your bushcraft chores you could carve let's say a, a emergency tent stake or something vampire stake this thing is sharp i mean you're, you're gonna see that more later in the video i will i will show you the scary sharpness of this uh, kukri can also be a weapon of war but i mean i assume most of you are not going to war i don't know there there's my handiwork and i'm gonna fix that with sandpaper and believe it or not i always do carry at least a little bit of sandpaper if I'm out in the wilderness somewhere, and no, it wasn't my idea. I learned that little tip from uh, viewers. There's a thousand and one uses for sandpaper, but one of them is to smooth out uh, your carving or your woodwork. And so there's my dart. Now I need one of those like poison skinned frogs to like dip that in. 
and then I could sling it at something. But, all right, uh, we don't have any poison frogs, though. So that's just one use of it. Okay, coming up. So in order to get a piece of wood to be the right thickness for me to carve that, this was moments before I took a thicker piece of wood, and I did baton it down until it was I had a piece of wood that was the right size I wanted to carve. And the rest of those pieces are just going to be some kindling. So basically you can make some kindling or you can size pieces of wood. You can get them to be the thickness you want if you wish to carve something. Now sometimes people say, oh, you don't need to do that for kindling. I just gather twigs and then I snap the twigs with my hands. All right, I, I mean, I don't have that many twigs around me, but I do have lots of extra firewood, so... There you go. Also, it's a knife review. I mean, you want me to gather twigs in a knife review? It just it doesn't make sense. But feel free to make your ultimate, like, gathering twigs video. I'll definitely give that a thumbs up. But anyway, this is making short work of this uh, little mundane, mundane outdoorsy chore. There is your kindling. What else can we do with this? Well, you can carve in this manner. Now, this is a type of carving where... You basically just chip off pieces of uh, what you're carving. This is useful, for example, if you had a piece of wood that was extremely hard, extremely weathered, extremely dense, and it was kind of resisting just normal whittling, right, where you maybe you're pushing against the spine of the knife with your thumb. Uh, this is basically just a way to apply more force to carving. Now, usually with this type of carving, you would use a small woodworking hatchet. But I've done it with large knives and machetes from all parts of the world. All right, now that particular piece of wood is not, is not especially dense, but that's what I had around. So I can uh, finish it uh, just with, uh, you know, that type of carving. It's like, kind of like whittling it to finish it. But it's just another type of carving, just another example of a thing you can do. All right, so with the help of this kukri, it's coming along my tactical anti-vampire uh, defensive <laughs> tactical unit. I don't know what what can you call it. If I put if I call it a tactical stake, I can sell it for a million dollars. Now, uh, just kidding. All right, but speaking of notches, now as you saw in the previous clip, when I carve that way, I tend to set the carve the item to carve in a notch. I brace it against a carving notch. Well, just seconds uh, after that, I made another notch. And you see this makes, uh, this digs in deeply and you can make a notch in a log. If it's a carving notch or make a bigger one, you could make a little seat for yourself. You want to you wanna have a place to sit down. All right, more stuff. This is just basic yard work. What? Not survival? No, this is not survival. Not bushcraft? No, this is not bushcraft. Uh, during the last storm, uh, you know, thunder, wind, rain, we had uh, some branches fall down, as is pretty common here. And uh, where I live, the local government will come cart away your yard debris, but it has to fit in a regulation government issue size yard debris bag. Which means if branches fall down, you got to chop them up. All right, so this is just an example of like a basic task that uh, you as a homeowner might do, right? Basic yard work. This would also be good for clearing brush. Now, I don't have any brush or, you know, over overgrown bushes that I need to clear at this time of year, but uh, this would be good for clearing brush, trimming your hedges, right? So b just basic uh, homeowner yard chores. This would be good uh, for a lot of things that you could use a heavier machete for. That's just another example. Okay, that concludes like the practical demo part of the video. I do have a little fun bottle slicing later, but first I just want to talk about the geometry here. As you can see, there is no big ass chunky conventional edge bevel, right? Right behind the edge, it does not get all thick, right? It's like the opposite of a hatchet. A hatchet often has a very broad edge for strength, right? This has a very fine edge, but yet it's still thick at the spine and has weight. So what does that mean for you? Basically, this thing will slice and chop very deeply into targets, okay? 
Uh, this thing would butcher a deer like nothing. All right. Uh, it, it's scary sharp. The, the fact that they've done it this way. All right. Just, uh, just check this out. Check, check this out. That's crazy that, that a 12 inch long, you know, fairly heavy fixed blade can slice into that as if it were like a spider codelica, which is like a super thin. I mean, the fact that it can slice the way a paring knife would have sliced it, that's crazy. All right, I got a little fun bottle slicing coming up. Uh, they also have some bottle cutting on their own website, the Great, Great Gurkha Kukuri website. So I figured they would enjoy a, a little bit of a, a nod to their bottle slice. I'm gonna cut the cap off of this sucker. I mean, the thing, it's so sharp, the bottle barely moves. I'm gonna cut the middle part. Yeah, I'm calling it like, like Bay Ruth. But there you go. That is my old cutting stand, uh, which wasn't even flat. Like that cutting stand that I'm using there, it's not even level. And the things don't, don't tip over. There was some anger. Uh, yeah, I, I think I saw a little, there, there's a little anger in that cut. Hey, this is, this is good stress relief, right? Cheers to you. That's just to show it's not crazy glued down. Uh, here's some water jugs getting massacred. Got off with its head, right? I can get one more cut out of that sucker. One more cut. Forehand. All right, there you go. Now, YouTube doesn't allow me to cut something that looks like a human. Right, so you're gonna have to use your imagination, but in World War II, Gurkhas actually decapitated enemy soldiers with their kukris. Right, so uh, you're just gonna have to use imagination land to figure out what this might do to an enemy soldier um, in the modern world. Uh, I think they would be hurting, right? Or like I said, you deer hunter, you. Uh, Try this on the next carcass you have. It's, it's going to be scary, dude. It's going to be scary. So like I said, a kukris have been used as weapons of war. And I, you know, I mean, this thing will just, uh, I, that would be scary to go up against that type of, of shearing force. I mean, like feet, arms, heads go flying. All right. Final thoughts on the uh, super fast full tang. Kukuri. Well, you can certainly use it for a lot of things. I mean, uh, notching, carving, you can make kindling, you could delimb a small tree, you could cut down some saplings, you could clear some brush, you know, cut, trim your hedges, cut some over, overgrown uh, bushes, you could chop up some fallen branches. I, I mean, there's kind of a limitless number of like bushcraft or camping or yard work chores that can be accomplished with an item like this. One thing I like about this, the handle is perfect for a large size Western hand, and I think it would also be comfortable if your hand is extra large as well, uh, within one size. So from medium to extra large, handle was perfect. That's not always true with kukris. Some older kukris I have, they tried to make them bigger because Westerners have a bigger hand, but they scaled it up wrong. This is scaled correctly for my hand and pro on average, probably your hand as well. As for the way they've done the, the grind and the edge, oh my God, I was shocked how sharp this was. That, that edge, never seen a kukri this sharp. Now here's a comparison with a larger kukri they have. That is the Royal Nepalese Gurkha uh, Army Kukri on top there. Now that is an inch and a half longer and it is heavier. That will be the next review and it's if you want to see the full stats, that's on their website. They also have about well over a hundred other models. So just check out their website. You want to want to see more of their work. I'm definitely pleased with this item. I, I recommend it as well as that website and that master bladesmith. So I'll include all the information uh, from all their social media. You want to order, check out their stuff. They have over a hundred different models. 
I will also include a list of links to very useful prepping items. Those will be Amazon links. Those do help support the channel. So if you like videos like this, where the person reviewing the item actually uh, puts the item through various tasks and shows you demonstrations of it actually cutting stuff, uh, support me by doing your normal shopping through those links. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.